This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. On the drive to and from my parents' house in Washington State, we almost always stop at two particular McDonald's, one in Salem, Oregon, and another in Eureka, California. At the moment, we are in the parking lot of the Salem location, and I just finished a Big Mac and fries. Even though we are just passing through, I appreciate the familiarity and feeling of community. The other day, I was looking through my mother-in-law's photo album and came across a photo where she and her friends are standing in front of a McDonald's wearing their cheerleading uniforms. I usually call my mother-in-law New Mom, but her name is Marsha. Under the photo, Marsha had written a note and I clocked her in to letting me read it here. San Bernardino, California. I have so many memories of this McDonald's over the years. My father took me there on what I think was opening day. What a thrill it was as a young girl to order a chocolate shake, hamburger, and french fries. Then there was the time when my cousin Hinda and I were given a tour and allowed to take dill pickles by the cupful out of a huge barrel. We must have eaten a hundred pickles each. Everyone in my family knows the story of how I accidentally missed the ketchup container and dipped a fry into my milkshake. Now when I dip fries in my shake, it's on purpose. I remember when I was 12 years old, my mother and my cousin Noel Novak, Larry's brother, picked me up from dance class and we went for dinner to celebrate Noel's graduation from high school. Years later, when I was in high school, we would go to McDonald's every Friday night after the football game. I wish you could see this photo. Marcia couldn't remember if they won the game that night, but everyone is smiling as if they did. Wherever your local McDonald's is, there's nothing better than that wonderful feeling of community. Well, maybe that feeling is tied with eating a Big Mac. McDonald's, I'm loving it. such a long process and it was fun but what what is it like to direct other actors it's so fun I kind of just felt like I was an audience watching just talented people work and I just wanted to create a safe space like a loving safe space yeah but when you want to do like sort of guide an actor in a specific way Mm -hmm. did you feel yeah, I guess, well, being an actor, I just wanted to be really loving. Like, I feel yeah. like whenever I work with a director, I feel like they're very loving and supportive. Then I just want to be my best self for them. So I just felt like I cast people I thought were really talented. And I just wanted to make them feel really appreciated and just ask for what I want. And just kind of, you know, in a certain way, you have to like just turn it over to them because it just becomes their thing. And you're just kind of observing them be. But like the gentle nudging uh, into a certain i don't know a line yeah. delivery yeah did you ever have like oh this isn't how i heard it in my head a uh, moment well i hired some people that were funny and they would improv stuff so sometimes i would just kind of let them go with their thing i mean occasionally somebody would go off on a tangent i'd be like that's not right i'd be like maybe don't do don't do that go do this like i like that like where you're going with this but stop doing that i would do that um and then what about like in editing did you like it's weird through. looking at your own face oh god <laughs> isn't it weird oh, so just like, i oh. fucking hate i'm like I'm why watching the your fuck own did i do that <laughs> move with my mouth and my my neck whatever i yes. know i know I'm, you got to get past out. that and just go like okay i got to get past that and just watch it and then it's hard, easy to be hard on yourself but then you can get past that and just go okay the story i'm trying to tell how can i just tell that the most clearly yeah yeah so because this is um such an important time i think you know, for, for women. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's so fucking rad. Isn't it amazing? I would. I, yeah. I and I, I work on a show where there's, you know, five female leads. That's bad. All above the age of, you know, of 40. 
and it feels so... You look so, so young. I would have thought you were like 32. <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> oh, well. Thank you, Heather yes. Graham. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, yeah, uh, It's all my healthy living. That's um, good. <laughs> That's good wine. It keeps you young. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's it, it's... It feels incredibly, um, but you've always created your own stuff, right? Because I remember when you did House Bunny, that was cool. Yeah, but so I moved here, um, not to make this podcast. About I want to interview you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I moved here during that time when, in, in 1999, when there was like a, a whole like plethora of teen movies. Like yeah. there was, um, that's right. Am I using that word? Ooh, whatever. We can examine mm. that later. Wait, because you were in Lost in Translation. Yeah. And you play the, the funny actress. Oh, funny. I would like it that you yeah. call her funny. Yeah, and she yeah. was just horrible. Yeah, but, yeah. um, but, but there, but the time of, um, all these teen movies. So it felt like there were a, a lot of jobs, yeah. um, f- you know, that you auditioned for, at least, yeah. you know, I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, me too. Yeah. And then there, then there was a shift into, um, into sort of, when that started to die down, how do you continue to work? Mm-hmm. And how do you like create your own projects? Mm-hmm. And yeah, because I feel like as an audience member, there's not, I want more things for women. Like, we're stories about women. Like, you're telling a story about women. That's cool. But I wish there were more. You yeah. Know? yeah. 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 And I'm a fucking jerk. <laughs> I, w- I want to see like women be jerks. When I was watching your movie this morning and the, the scene in the, with the studio executives and you were saying, like, what if the slut actually fought back and was the killer? And, you know, I would love to see a movie like that. And it was just, it was interesting to see how for so long, Hollywood would only have a certain type of movie and I and you're right now you don't even think about it as like a young girl growing up you watch movies and it's how you start to think about the world and you don't even think about how much we're programmed to be in the sexist society you know because all these movies are made by men written by men right you know um, distributed by men written about in the large part by men so we're being told what our lives should be by all these men do you remember getting a script and like the character description was like she slowly unbuttons her top <laughs> and i mean th- i never got those roles but um but i remember in the scripts being like mm. that's the character introduction like i remember in 8 mile auditioning for Brittany Murphy's part um in 8 mile and i remember the character d- description was something like a honey dipped girl wanders in with like her breasts like popping out of you know her blouse and thinking like oh fuck that is not me i don't know how <laughs> you're kind of fucking- honey dipped you got blonde hair <laughs> but I so didn't yeah. feel yeah. those. It's like a guy's perception. Exactly. Of a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It wasn't like. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so directing was a big. I loved reward. it. I really loved it so much because I guess I just wanted to make a movie that empowers women because I feel like watching movies, I just get frustrated seeing female characters be victimized a lot or be like always be the supporting role or I just feel like the really great powerful parts are like not that much and I usually never got them. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to write a part that I feel is empowering to women. I love that. story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. And it's about like friendship, female friendship and how we are so powerful and wonderful and just watching women win in stories I think is cool too. Like Come. watching them in the end be happier than they and were in the beginning. So important now. Mm-hmm. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> oh, the movie's called Half Magic. We should let everyone oh, yeah. know that. And mm-hmm. it's available on iTunes mm-hmm. and you can actually see it in theaters as well. Yeah, it's on like every different streaming iTunes. How do you, when you're promoting it, do you want people to actually see the movie in the theaters versus or seeing it on TV at the... I think either way is great. I mean, it's fun to watch it with people. I have some friends that are like, I'm getting my girlfriends together because it's kind of like a girlfriend's movie though. It was funny. Somebody, tweeted me over the weekend this guy was like I lost the coin toss with my wife and ended up watching Half Magic because I guess you know he wanted to watch a guy movie but it was funny what he's like but then I ended up really liking yeah. it and really liking the characters and just uh, I hope Heather Graham directs another movie so I retweeted yes. it I'm like thank you <laughs> seriously all men should watch this movie because they'll learn a lot about women as well so it's thank you I think, no. <laughs> I think it's like yeah I mean it was very very I mean, enjoyable we always go to I feel like women always go like oh yeah I'll go with my boyfriend to his guy movies and like we always go see guy movies but I don't know guys I feel like are not as willing sometimes to watch the girl movies with us you know what I think there's also the uh, like an unwillingness to concede 
um, sort of an appreciation. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of like, oh yeah, my girlfriend likes you. Like, I'm yeah, sure, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. or like, oh yeah. Well, I also get a lot of like, my mom really loves your show. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, but anyway, that's good though. It's good. It, it's, it's all good. Yeah, but yeah. but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. I think that there's the. Um, just to, it's like it's a prejudice because it's like oh men's films are for everyone but women's films are just for a small audience which isn't true you know same thing yeah. with authors yeah right, what would, would you say about that? romantic comedies in general would you say romantic comedies are generally directed towards women because i know i have all my buddies all my guy friends love romantic comedies i know aren't they great yeah they're not really making as many anymore i know why is that Did sim because, yes Okay, I'm going to press you on this. Oh, don't, I, I, know, I know where you're going with this. I know where you, this is not the time. What are your favorite well, romantic comedies? Yeah. Well, she's, that's what she's getting. <laughs> Heather well, my, asked you that. My favorite I romantic didn't. comedy, it's, it's incredibly polarizing now as okay. it gets older and it, as it ages. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Love Actually. Of course, you know. Oh, thank you. I, mean, so I haven't you watched it recently. But, but did you like it? I mean, all of those movies are great, right? Like Anna has Hill. a big problem with it. Oh, really? Tell me. I, I uh, Listen. I don't like a like a spread out storyline. I don't like multiple. Yeah, uh, it's like why? movies where they cast like twenty movie stars and you can't uh, ex- really follow exactly. one plot. Yeah. But if it works, if you if you like because every single emo- subplot, for me, I want to invest emotionally in the relation in a singular relationship. Yeah, and okay. the beauty of this is that you don't have to invest in a singular right. relationship. That's why you're you hate fucked a certain- up. You fucking dick <laughs> but I like <laughs> right. see this, I knew I was going to lose this argument Sorry, Heather. <laughs> I like the movie listen it's enjoyable for sure yeah. most deaf thank you I'm glad Heather but, enjoyed it <laughs> but no <laughs> to be honest actually I've never seen it sorry I just went along with that because I was Wait, just you've like never seen it? <laughs> like out of the loop okay i just pretended i saw it (laughs) okay wait what's your most favorite romantic comedy well okay i feel sort of guilty saying this because it used to be tootsie right but now that all these people made these allegations against him i feel kind of bad as it being my favorite comedy that, I, oh, wait, th- okay, I feel like, like that's lofty. That's awesome. Is it? But okay, so Tootsie, but let me just back up. Harold and Maud. I don't know Amazing. if that qualifies that as does. a comedy. Oh, but I'm Heather, obsessed. come on, give us a guilty pleasure. A guilty pleasure. Yeah, like okay. the one when you're really sick, you feel kind of loopy. Episodes of Sex in the City. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I'll take the that. The one where Sarah Jessica Parker, she sees Mr. Big. He has like his wedding party at the plaza and she's walking out and there's like a horse and she's like, some women can't be tamed. We just need to run free and be wild. I don't know. Do you know this yes, episode? Yes, yes, like, I, I do. I would replay that episode. Over and over. And right before they're all sitting in like the restaurant talking about like the way we were, something about the Barbara Streisand. Yes. And like that was an amazing episode of Sex in the City. Okay. What about like um, Pretty Woman? Yeah. I mean, it's great. Harry Met Sally? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cassie? Um, the Proposal? Oh, yeah. yeah I love the Proposal. Was was that was fun. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no. Listen to Sim. No. No. I don't know. I didn't love that. You movie. said that in such a lax days. Well, I mean, I love Julia no. Roberts and Richard Gere together, but not in that movie. Which movie did you Pretty love? Woman. <laughs> That's it. I love them there. Okay. Do you mind, Heather, if yeah. we play a game? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is Deal Breakers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was listening to you do this with Whitney Cummings. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was I'm funny. Sorry. All right. So I'm not going to inquire okay. um, if you are single or, okay. you know, whatever. I'm single. So. <laughs> Deal breakers. Okay. He drives an old police car, but is not a policeman. <laughs> How did you think that up? <laughs> Has you, have you ever known I, anyone like I that? I just want to listen okay. to you laugh for a while. Oh my God. It's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, hmm. It's weird. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, it's not bad enough to be a deal breaker, but I would be con- slightly concerned. Why? Um, why? Why does he have an old police car? Well, because he was a, he was a school patrol guard okay. back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's not crazy about authority. <laughs> but he <laughs> Is also, he eccentric in a cool way? Like, yeah. 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 Huh. He's like, is it like really like, is it well maintained or is it just really dirty and messy and like lots of trash in the back? And- there's, uh, let's say there's a few like Burger King bags. So is it like know, a classic the- old car or it's just like a trashy, disgusting heap of junk? Well, uh, somewhere in between. Hmm. I want to make How this cute tra- is he? He's pretty hot. <laughs> He's pretty hot. But he okay. has, a, you know, an undercurrent of anger. Oh, really? Or 
like deal breaker <laughs> <laughs> yes no, right yes, right yes. i know yeah. i i was trying to make that challenging undercurrent of anger yeah i know is, yeah. yeah yeah i know i right. never turns out well um, especially okay. if they turn it at you <laughs> on the second date he calls his mom and says i'm just at dinner with my girlfriend Ooh. Wow. Like, Mom, can I call you back? I'm just sitting there with my girlfriend. I guess it would depend on how into him I was. If I was like, Ooh. love at first sight, like this guy's so hot. Going to, I do tend to do this. I go into a fantasy in my mind. Like you meet someone, you're like, this is the one. Now I'm happy. I figured it out. I just need to be with this guy, you know, which is bad. I'm trying not to do that, but I totally can do that sometimes. Oh God, yeah. Because uh, I think that as sort of passionate people, th that's what happens. You yeah. sort of, you... Like, I don't know you, but I'll just put an amazing fantasy on you and just decide, like, now I figured my life out. Yeah. Is that yeah. most women, like, right away? Like, I don't know no? if it's most women. If you really but... like the guy, do you think most women immediately see themselves and they have the fantasy of all of that? Yes? You're like, everything yes. you want. You know, if he fits enough of the bill, you know, you just start going, oh, my God, now I figured it out. I don't need to date anymore. I don't need to date, you know, like, this But guy. what would be the top yeah. four things that, that you yeah. would, that I'm looking for? Yeah. Um, I kind of like, you know, I guess you have to be like attracted to the person, like something, not necessarily the exact same thing with every guy, but feel some sort of chemistry and then feel like that you can talk to him and that you feel like it's, you're enjoying talking to him. And I guess you don't want to be with like a jerk. You want him to be a good guy and then fun. I don't know. What are your top four things? Oh, I mean, I think you, you sort of. Knocked them all out yeah. there. Um, I think, um, I, I don't know, I'm 41. I, I think, um, I mean, it's it feels so stupid to say something obvious like sense of humor. Right. Because well, that yeah, is you have so such a good linked. sense of humor. You don't want to be with someone who does no sense of humor, right? Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but no, but, but. But because that's so linked to intelligence or like how we connect. Yeah. And like, it's fun because ultimately, at the end of the day, you can be attracted to someone, but you have to hang out with them all the time. And if you're not having fun hanging out with them, then you don't really have anything. I like, um, I, I like, th um, the idea of priority. If somebody, um, has, like, doesn't prioritize what I deem as small things in life. Mm -hmm. Like if like somebody, what? Well, like um, is everything put away? <laughs> or like you're really neat? Is that what you're saying? No, oh, I'm a really fucking mess. mess. Okay, okay. Yes. So you can't be with a guy who's like OCD clean. Uh, I, I just yeah. I just want our prior to like yeah. you know I want yeah. I want the things to line up. Like and cleanliness is important for you not to have no. to be. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes exactly. Yes. I'm filthy. Okay. I'm disgusting. But no, your house looks you know clean. that's sweet. You it say looks clean. Uh, that's, yeah. Uh, because <laughs> there's a little team. Okay. Around that's here good. sometimes. Good to have a team. I may or may not have ringworm. Right Right now, oh, <laughs> interesting. Don't lick my armpit. <laughs> Once I met a guy who had gout. Isn't that weird that people actually still get gout? Is that from like eating a lot of meat? I feel like it's if happens? you don't eat fruit, it's or a something. swollen yeah. foot, right? I, yeah, something yeah, your like foot that. Gets really big. It's like I these old-fashioned yeah. diseases that wow. I don't know. But listen, give me, <laughs> give me a guy with gout. Really? So you like a messy guy? You want him more messy than you? Just like. <laughs> uh, slobby guy. Uh, it is kind of nice a guy that's not too perfect. You don't want him to be like so perfect. I just, I, you know, I want like the grander things in in life. Yeah, because we all work so hard. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, so you're I, working your butt off. So are you? Yeah, dude? yeah, I am. But like a TV show where you work like nine months out of the year, like fifteen to sixteen hours a day, probably. Right? I do have a lot of fucking lines. <laughs> <laughs> and by lines, I mean those words that I have to memorize. And by those words I have to memorize, I mean the faces that I have to express with them. You know, you could get one of those ear, but you know that Marlon Brando couldn't learn his yeah. lines at the end, so he put this little piece thing in his ear, and the people would feed him his lines. Heather, is there any chance you could talk, talk to Chuck <laughs> Lorre and say like he's not going to like that, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh, he might. You know, I worked Coming with Johnny from Depp a while ago, and he did have like a little earbud thing, and he oh, would put wow. music in it, and like they would wire every set and play music in his earbud that he thought would like inspire him in the scene. That's amazing. But what about the lines of dialogue too? Is I, no, I don't know that he was doing that. So he I, just he, he had, memorized like, a DJ the lines. Guy that would travel around with him on his jobs and be like 
you know, they would play songs through this earbud that he would listen to during a scene. A special we DJ that's just... Isn't that... That isn't for that, Johnny Depp yeah. that only playing music for his ears and no yes, one else. Yes, in an earbud. <laughs> and then I was like, what are you listening to? And occasionally he was like, let me listen to it. <laughs> I mean, isn't that... That's an interesting job description, right? It's like, you, if you hire me, you also need to hire my wiring DJ guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea whether I admire him more or admire him less. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, he has two twin beds in his bedroom. Wow. Like they're not pushed together. They're just separated. Like he doesn't want to sleep in the same bed with a woman. That well, he's with. here's where it gets a little complicated. Maybe yeah, if yeah. you want to explore it. Yeah. If, if that's the kind of thing that you look at and you're like, I'm is that out. a deal breaker for you? Oh. It would ha- it would really have to be like a lot of the leading moments up to I mean I'm yeah. already if I'm already at his place yeah, yeah, so yeah. we've uh, he's intrigued it is weird. me enough. it's weird um yeah. but uh but we we sort of thought of the idea that um you know he wanted to give you an option mm-hmm. um he may get like some night sweats but he really wants to be close to you. I have two you. good friends and they're in a good relationship. In the very beginning, the guy told the girl, like, I can't sleep in the same bed with you because I won't be able to sleep. So that they would take turns. One of them would sleep on the floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but they're still together. That sounds cuckoo, it, it, right? It, it, yeah, it, 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 it works. Awesome. Sounds great. Yeah. 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 So then eventually they started sleeping in the same bed. Deal breaker? Twin beds? Um, no, it's not. I'm desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'll put up with a lot. The police car, <laughs> yes. Twin beds, yes. Girlfriend, yeah. <laughs> during the second date, yes. No. <laughs> um, you go home with a guy who says he's a vegetarian, and in the morning you catch him eating some prosciutto. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good, because that's like lying, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You go. You go before I make a weird defense of the. Case well, I guess I might want to ask more. Like, well, you said you're vegetarian. Why are you eating this prosciutto? You know. Um, and then if he had a good explanation, I, I'd probably be okay with it. But if he was just, I don't know, Heather. Yeah, what were you? I, I got to tell you. Yeah. Um, I told you I was a vegetarian because yeah. I read online that you were. Uh- <laughs> and uh, that's a deal breaker but i love you <laughs> i love you so much will you come sleep in my bed with me my twin one <laughs> this is a deal breaker okay yeah. it is yeah. All right. yeah 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 you're not yeah. you're okay all right you're all right all he's right. not being true to himself he's not like authentic um okay so very pressing question for you mm-hmm. what would you prefer a Pegasus or a unicorn? Mm. <laughs> is it bad? I don't know what a Pegasus is. I think I do. It's but a I, winged horse. Oh, a winged. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a hard question. You can ride both. Well, unicorns can't fly though, right? Or no. 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 Okay, I think I have to go for the Pegasus. Oh, all right. Yeah. So you can fly. Okay. Yeah, what about you? Well, it depends. If I have like an enemy that I need like to be stabbed, yeah, then you need the horn. Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, if I also need to, you know, fly across the Atlantic, that's good. I like flying because I always have dreams where I'm flying, and it's like my fantasy to fly. Like I have really amazing dreams at night where I believe flying around. Okay, but then sometimes I lose. You the were ability describing to fly. every person I've been with. I'm really by, like, but you've never had that. Yes, I've okay. slept with, and they like will wake up and they'll be like, "Oh my god, I had this amazing fucking flying dream! It was so incredible!" And meanwhile, I'm like, "I almost didn't know any of my lines, and I got fired." <laughs> <laughs> and your whole thing is learning, remembering like your the lines. Anxiety, yes, or like, yeah, or like I had a you know a fucking final that I didn't study for. Ugh. But I mean that you could just do another take if you forgot your lines. You probably could make up something funny too, right? It's not like okay. you'll probably make up your own funny line. I love you. <laughs> Will you direct me? No, I'm just reasoning you out of this fear, oh. which is probably not really that bad, that thing. Okay, he sleeps with an eye mask. Not a deal breaker. Okay. Do you sleep with an eye mask? No. I feel a little claustrophobic in an eye mask. Yeah. I don't mind light in the room. I could sleep with light blaring in. It doesn't bother me. Um, okay. 
Oh, so we do. This was taken mm-hmm. from your movie. Okay. Okay. Um, he wants to know how you feel about your personal life, and uh, he calls you his dirty little slut <laughs> insects. <laughs> He calls me the dirty little slut during sex. It depends on the situation. In the right moment with a nice guy, I could maybe get into it. But in if the guy's a jerk, like in my movie, it's not good. I think it's so fucking hot. Do you? Yeah, it could be fun. It right? all depends oh on the yeah. guy. And if you're in a real relationship, yeah. if you're, yeah. you just met the guy, yeah. and he says that to you. And if you're into him, that's kind of weird, right? It's, you're right. It's the intention underneath it. As I was yeah. listening to one of your other podcasts, you were talking about this. But yeah, it's the intention. If you feel like you have a good bond and it's just like a fun, sexy thing, it's hot. But if it's like an asshole guy just treating like right. crap, it's not hot. Yeah. I read. But, I watched this interesting TED Talk. It was a guy. He's like, I'm tired of being man enough. It's really interesting if you want to check it out. Just like feeling like as a guy, you're not allowed to express your feelings or that if you are vulnerable or loving that then you're called gay. And it's sort of about him like just fa- saying like, I, I want to be an emotional person. I wanted that. It's cool. It's a cool TED talk. And I guess that uh, I always resented being born a girl. Yeah. So maybe I guess this well, is I know because like, it's like such a sexist society. You're like, why can't I be the lead in the action movie? Or why can't I like... Just it seems easier to be a guy, though. I guess I'm not a guy, so I don't know. Is it easier to it's, be a guy? I was just talking to Anna about this earlier, and and my my wife says it all the time. And she always says, you know, like you have no idea how difficult it is. And I and and there you're all right. I I don't. We have to do so many things so to our bodies absolutely. and our grooming, no, like and our hair. It's like the yeah. amount of work that we have to put into this stuff. No, I I, I get it. I'll not only I'll ever understand, but I I I'm very happy that I don't have to go through ten percent of the stuff that you guys have to go through. Sim, it's true. Why does that feel so disingenuous? If there's anything more I could do, I would do it. But there are fun things about being a woman, though. Too like we get to play with our tits uh, and our clits. Yeah, supposedly the clit has more nerve endings than the penis. Yeah, we got a lot of nerves. You guys sold me that I was born the wrong gender. <laughs> No, but Sim, of course, there's like hard things about being a dude as well. Not, yeah, not what's the hardest enough. thing about being a guy? No, honestly, what's the hardest? I, I've thing? lived Come a very on. charmed. Yeah. Uh, oh, men fuck live a very you. charmed Come life. Come on, it's fuck true. You. I mean, Come on, tell like, us even all hard. the added pressure. What's the hardest? Isn't, hard? isn't it hard to feel like, oh, am I pleasing her? That's always in difficult. Bed. That's right, always hard. Like, but that, that's not yeah. the hardest. What's about the being hardest? The hardest thing about being a man. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. I guess it's the expectation and the pressure yeah. to perform is it like a money, on every pre- single money, everything. Like make money. It's like, like you have to be on top of yeah. your game on everything, and and yeah. and if you're and if you're not, then it, or if you are, then someone else is trying to knock you out. So you have that pressure as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm not saying because I'm at the top of whatever, but I'm just saying that I always feel pressure to perform uh-huh. in all aspects of it. What life. about emotionally? Do you feel like you're not allowed to have feelings? Because you're always supposed to be like strong and stoic. Or? I'm lucky enough to be with a woman no. that understands that I'm an emotional guy and. Mm-hmm. Talk, can talk about That's my feelings cool. and it's 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 really and what you were talking about where's your earlier, family from my family yeah um from india oh wow yeah okay yeah hmm. so i mean that really hasn't played into my upbringing as much yeah. as far from a, from a how they raised me but mm-hmm. but yes i guess it has in the sense that yeah. i've always have to do well yeah yeah pressure so that pressure is hard the yeah. pressure to do well you in have all the masculine of pressure of like right right yeah. exactly but that's about everything but that's nothing compared to what you guys go through you guys have all of that and more. I think that's sweet of you to say, but it also feels kind of weirdly dismissive. <laughs> what do you mean? I know, I know. I don't mean to start an argument here, but I think that, uh, I don't know, my parents raised me to be like you. Well, I mean, you know, my mom was always like, you are going to make your own money. Mm. Never, ever depend on a man. Mm. And um, mm. so I think it's... Sort of not like, but the, yeah, there's additional challenges for sure. Hmm. And you figure out how to navigate those waters. Um, well, just childbirth. Forget. I mean, I can't even imagine what goes on inside your bodies. What when was this, that like? When this, I've never you, had it. 
your <laughs> organs, your organs, and you're being pushed it's aside as this baby's. I mean, growing inside your body, and and like a, they're growing arms and 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 organs inside your body, and, and you have no idea what's happening. But there to is you. a it's, cool movie about Russian water births, if called Birth into Being, and that they say that it's orgasmic. If you, I don't know, some really? people claim, yeah, it's a crazy thing. There's a woman who's like a doula or something, and she gives birth to her kid in a watery tub that is glass. You can look through. She had two of her kids are sitting in the tub with her. She gives birth to her own baby. It pops out. What? It's crazy. You have to watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was insane. like epidural, epidural, epidural. <laughs> no, but I, no, I, I think that there's that, there's that, there's, we're in this really interesting time um, in sort of human civilization, I guess. Um, and this sounds lofty, maybe a touch stonery, <laughs> even though I have not. Are smoked. you stone right now? No, no, I know. <laughs> oh my god, you would think yeah. no, but the, I think the idea of why why I stopped believing in God mm. for a little while um, mm. was when I was a kid. I was given a child's Bible, and I just thought, well, if God wanted to make women the weaker sex couldn't they have made us stupider and that way we would be happier and then we could sort of appease the smart man and what you know whatever i like i sort of spun out on that for a while and i was angry for a long time but i think all women are a little angry about sexism it's kind of like i'm sure racism like you've got to be kind of pissed off about it if you have to deal with it. it's like being a woman some women are like no it doesn't bother me but i just think it does like it bothers you at some level even if you're not admitting it you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and there's there's glorious things to it of course mm. but um but yeah i so so being pregnant and giving birth <laughs> To me, felt like I had I was this vessel in this and had this wonderful secret um, of being able to like kind of grow this thing um, mm. that's now un fucking believable. Mm. And he's you know I, you're making I, it sound I, amazing, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time feeling such a loss of identity mm. and that my uh, you know that like uh, like all I had accomplished was sort of dissipating hmm. and Why? you're accomplishing so much and like making a person i think though that it felt like okay is holly going to view me as now a mom mm. or you know every time i mm -hmm. went to the doctors it was like okay the baby's doing great and it was like okay all right this is my job then i guess i can't like I'm on restriction for this thing that is growing inside of me. And I've never, I, and it was childish of mm. me to mm -hmm. have that reaction, but that's how, that's how I felt. Um, and but you did it anyway. I did it anyway. Was it like a biological thing? You just always wanted a kid or? No. Yeah. No, just, I didn't. Really? No. It just I, happened and you were like, this feels right? Well, no, that, that's not exactly true. Chris and I have been trying for a while. Um, but I, uh, you are an interviewer. I like asking, Listen, my you, friends always call me the you, interviewer. Yeah, Maybe oh I need God. to have a podcast. I like you asking should have your own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like asking people questions. It's interesting. <gasps> Molly but, Shannon is like that too. Whenever we go to a party together, she asks everyone so many questions. She knows everything about them by the end of the night. It's, it's a, it's an incredible quality though. It's because fun. Curiosity mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a great It's interesting. Well, I've never had a kid, so I'm just curious what it's like, you know? Ugh. Uh, <laughs> Ow. Ow. Mm. Why? <laughs> Me? No. I'm young, right? No. My tits are nice. I don't know. That's what it is. That oh was the God. that was a summation. <laughs> okay. Uh you are dating a guy who is also into TM. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Except he does TTM. Which is topless, transcendental meditation. He does. He takes his shirt off and, and meditates. And he'd really like it if you did that. As well. <laughs> well, for dating, I'm probably already taking my shirt off with him, right? Or you're just saying the early days, like the first date or something. I don't know how soon you take your top off with a dude. I don't so know. The Let's, first date, for yeah. sure. <laughs> no, I try to hold off to like the third date at least. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. What do you think about topless? <sighs> That's fine with me. Okay, but what if what about mm -hmm. this? You're meditating, mm -hmm. and you 
sort of open your eyes Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you find him like completely glued (laughs) to your nipples. Oh my God. And we haven't had sex yet? Like, or have we been dating for a while? We have Uh, not had sex. This is like your third (laughs) date, third or fourth date. We have not had sex. No. Okay. Um, I guess it depends on how cute he is and how into him I am. Maybe he's pretty cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Are you kind of near in this thing where you're, is he Uh, creepy or is he just like a cute guy who wants to meditate? He's a cute guy, (laughs) but, but it might be a tiny bit weird that he wants you to take your shirt off. I don't, I just don't know. I don't know, Heather. This is your Uh, guy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, I guess it depends on how good the chemistry is. Is it really good chemistry, like amazing, or just like not it's that pretty much? Good. Yeah, yeah. I could probably live through that one. All right, all right. Not I have low standards, bigger. as I said. <laughs> <laughs> Send me your weirdos, your basket cases. If they have a problem that I can fix, that's my type. <laughs> this episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Warby Parker. Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit and the lofty goal of creating boutique-quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. Sunglasses, with or without a prescription, start at $95 and, just like eyeglasses, are available through their home try-on program. You just choose five pairs and see which ones you like. I was surprised by how quickly they arrived, which presented me with the immediate problem of deciding which ones to keep. I loved all of them, so you can guess what happened. And not only can you feel good about how cool you look, you can also feel good knowing that for every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need through partnerships with nonprofits like Vision Spring. Offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. So put your FSA or HSA dollars to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash unqualified. That's W-A-R-B-Y-P-A-R-K-E-R dot com slash unqualified. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Osea. Wondering what to gift your friends and family this holiday season? Female founded over 25 years ago by a mother and daughter team, Osea's award-winning cleansers, serums, face moisturizers, and body products give you the results you want. Skin that looks and feels amazing. I recently got to try Osea's new body butter, which, like their now famous Andaria algae body oil, transforms dry skin without being greasy, has the same incredible scent, and leaves your skin soft, smooth, and healthy looking. If my experience is any indication, you can count on your partner giving you a lot of compliments. This holiday season, stock up and share your new favorite clean skincare and body care with your friends and family. Unqualified listeners get 10% off your first order with promo code ANA at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order, and orders over $50 get free shipping. Gifting is always easier if you start early, so head to oseamalibu.com. Use code ANA. So now we are going to go. Let's the calls. Okay. okay. Do you know about this part? You do know about this I did. I listened part. to one of, yeah, yeah, Thanks. Yeah. By yeah, the way, you and- you're fucking amazing. <laughs> it's Thank fun you. talking to you. Yeah, I've always thought you were so good. Like, Thank I love you. your work. Yeah, it's really great. All right, so we're okay. going to call Mira first. Mira is in Louisville, and mm. she's 23. Hello? Hey, Mira, it's Sim. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm going to introduce you to Anna right now. Hi, Mira. 
Hi! Oh my God! Hi! Hi! Thank you so much for doing this. You're so lovely. And, and she's going to introduce our guest. And our guest is the most amazing Heather Graham. Hi. Hi. Oh my goodness. I get to talk to two people I really love <laughs> and Sam, who I also love. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so Mira, tell us what's going on at work. All right. Um, so what's been happening at work is I've kind of been getting bullied. I'm not really sure. Um, but lately I got promoted to a, a better group where I'm no longer taking calls. Now I'm responding to people <laughs> in written, but Basically, these girls have gotten super rude and, like, catty towards me. Um, I get acknowledged for my work because I do really good at my job. And people, like, they give me gift cards and they'll literally, like, yell across the office that I don't deserve it or that I'm just being a tryhard or that I'm just doing too much and I'm making their jobs hard. Um, one girl in particular told me I just shouldn't show up into work because I'm making her life hard. Wait, Mira, and what what did she say? What was the quote that she said? She told me on numerous occasions I, I shouldn't just show up to work because I make her job hard. Who the fuck are these people? What's your job? Is that okay <laughs> to ask? Um, it, My job's kind of complicated. I work for a stock company, and I actually um, have to handle very ex- like extensive questions in regard to their accounts and just stuff that doesn't make sense. And... I find it to be a very easy job. Um, we all got the same amount of training, but these like three girls that are just mean I don't girls. Say lazy. Sounds like the movie Mean Girls. They're really mean. Um, one of them actually told my boyfriend uh, when I introduced him at the Christmas party. He uh, she looked him dead in the face and said, "Why do you even like her?" And cut off all communication and like walked off. Oh. Oh. Get them fired. <laughs> it's yeah. not- I don't really know what to do um, if I should just go to HR because they say these things in front of my uh, my manager. They'll they'll actually be like, you should take that gift card away because you've already given her like five or she's cheating on whatever. And they don't really care, which makes me feel like maybe I'm either being really insecure or maybe I should just go to HR, but I'm not sure what to do exactly. So these are your, your bosses are, are telling or aren't saying anything after, I mean, they're witnessing all of this, right? They're witnessing the bullying. Yeah. Everybody is seeing this. It's a, it's like, I'm kind of getting put like on a pedestal and then, They're like literally being like, she doesn't deserve any of this. She doesn't do anything. Do you have like a friend at work who's like in a higher up position that you could talk to about it? So it's not totally human resources or I mean, that could be good, too. But do you have somebody that you you feel comfortable with that you like that like each other? You feel like you could tell them about it? Um, I don't really know anyone at work. This sounds awful. I've been there for uh, like two years and I don't really talk to people. I kind of keep my head down. And the only time I ever actually talk is when people come up to me i i don't really like go out of my way to talk to anybody and my only friend there she got fired like a year ago so i I really don't know anyone sounds like you're just she's getting punished for doing well at work yeah Uh, so but also is there is there one person in particular that feels uh, this is sort of out of curiosity but one person in particular that feels like the ringleader one of them used to be kind of nice to me, uh, but then uh, I just started getting acknowledged more for processing more items than other people and just for my quality. Um, that when I was actually assigned to help her with a project, and that's when like it just started getting even worse from there. That sucks. What do you do when they're rude know. to you? Do you ever say like, do you ever say anything like, hey, I don't like it when you talk to me like that. Stop talking to me like that. I'm going to talk to human resources. I don't Who know. Who the fuck are these people, though? Like, uh, sorry, Mira, I, but sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Heather. No, go. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, I'm not very confrontational. Um, I kind of just kind of like, keep my head down. I'm just, I take note of it and I like keep it in like my notebook of insecurity, but I really just don't really do anything. I'm just annoyed that your bosses aren't doing anything when they're witnessing this. I hate that. I and mean, that's something you just, I mean, I would, I don't know. See, the problem is if she goes to HR, 
then right. it could get a lot right. worse. Right, right, right. It totally. could get a lot worse totally. because her bosses don't care. Then they can say, well, she's really right. not that great. And then they'll find right. cause to fire her. And it's going to, and then but if maybe she's it's gonna, good to yeah. stand up for yourself. Like maybe this is a lesson in standing up for yourself. And if you lose the job, it sounds like you're super talented. You'll just get another one and then like not be miserable. But she's, I mean, I would, of course, but don't you yeah. think that she would have stood up for herself already? I don't think she's a, conf- you're not a confrontational person though, right, Mira? I'm, I'm very introverted. Would it be out of character for you? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's good to sometimes push yourself. Okay, so, uh, all right. Well, it's, and you love your boyfriend. Oh, yeah. He's like the only person I have in my life right now. Um, okay, that's amazing. So, and and are you in a job where you have to communicate all the time? Do you listen to like earbuds? Like, what do you, like, how, how do you, are you in a cubicle? Are you in a little office? Like, what's your space like? Um, so the way it's all set up is they have like an open floor where you have like a desk, but you're also like in a row of people. So I usually wear headphones unless I actually have to uh, talk with like people on further issues. So I don't tend to communicate with people I work with and uh, people just tend to avoid me now because I don't go out of my way to like conversate just because I, I get this in like mindset that I just want to go home. Like, let me just do my job. And how old are the, these girls that, that are, Oh, they're way older than me. They're like probably between like 35 and maybe like 45. Like they're like a good 10 year difference. What, what the fuck? It sounds so immature. Right? Yeah, like, I've never, I, I would just, I thought they would have been the same age, like in the twenties, early twenties, 35 to 45. Oh, no. And they're being mean in front of the bosses. It just, this, have you heard of any kind of situation like that? No. Why would they do that? I don't make this make any sense to me. I don't know. I feel like I mean, what do you? I mean, do you? We could you exist in this job with these people treating you like this, or do you think at the end of the day you're just like it's not worth it? Because I mean, to me, talking to human resources sounds like at least it's something to do, other than it's actually speaking up when they say something and say, "Don't talk to me like that," you know? Right, and that's what I've considered is just going to HR, but I don't really know how to like just come across the. I'm doing well and they hate me for it. Well, it sounds like you're doing your job well when they want to keep you and make you happy. Whereas it sounds like these three girls are like underachievers. So I would feel like they'd try to bend over backwards to make you happy as opposed to them based on what you said. You would think, right? If there's, she's kicking ass at work. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, God. Mira, I'm so sorry. That sucks. Um, but, uh, but I, and I don't, I wish I had like, Sometimes I feel like when we do the calls that I have sort of an easy solution. I don't know if I have one in this in this, this case tough. because I I don't know if um if going to human resources necessarily solves anything. Um but but I do think that you know you should look out for your own happiness and so you know a sense of self um and uh, are you know. happy at this job or I mean you could also look for another job a better job potentially oh I love my job I actually don't think I could find a better job because I did not do well in school and for some reason I got this job and they gave me all the training and then I just flew from there like I, I understood everything stronger so than anything really I ever learned in school that's why they're threatened they're just they're jealous yeah, that she's you're really great at, at it. it and she's making all the gift because they're not they're not getting gift cards if you get a is that you get gift cards when you make like a certain number or a bonus is that how it works Right. Um, they give out gift cards anytime someone has like extreme high productivity or is doing really well with quality or um, sometimes I handle VIP shareholders and they'll go out of their way to tell them how I'm doing a good job and I'll get a gift card out of it. But my job always likes to make it like a scene if you receive an award because they want everybody to get up to that expectation. I guess. You know, you could do something if you could say detach with love and just say, OK, this is not about me. Don't take this personally. They're bitches because I'm Obviously, they're they're unhappy in their lives, and I just won't take it in. They're a bitch, and right. I, it has nothing to do with me. Don't take it personally. Just be like, "That's your shit." I'm sorry, you're such an unhappy person, you know. But like, just don't take it in. Yeah, Mira, I think that um, if you, with with the exception of them, are still happy at your job um, and enjoy it, they will filter out, and and you'll you'll prevail. So I think that just. Um, 
Keep I don't your know. head down. Keep, keep yeah. continue to do the work. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't take yeah. it personal. That's but their she shouldn't problem. say anything. To Feels like ever, high right? school to me. Like how my strategy with high school was. Yeah. Just like lay low, do well. And like maybe someday I'll fucking move to Hollywood. I'll look for, I would look for an ally too. Maybe somebody who's higher up than you guys. And, and you know, if you feel comfortable, just maybe say, oh, look, at an unofficial capacity, this is happening. Right. And like, you know, I know I'm working so hard for you and I've gotten all this stuff. Can you help me out in this situation? But that does worry me a little bit because I, I wouldn't want Mira to ever be perceived as a victim. So I think that that would have to be a very careful choice, you know? Um, uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think well, she this, is the victim of bullying right? for sure. Yeah, yes, yeah. but I don't want her perceived right. as if she's good at what she does. Mm -hmm. She really loves it. Mm -hmm. Then I wouldn't want her to be promoted because of, uh, like, you know, I I would want her to advance only because of her merits. I guess. Um, but I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm unqualified. <laughs> um, we but, care though. We hope yeah. it works out for you. But, 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 but so, okay, so no, don't go to human resources for now. Continue to do the work. Um, I, you know what I would do? Maybe document these things. If things sort of escalate, I, I would definitely go to human resources. But also know that all this shit, it, it fucking, you have an extreme version of workplace aggression. But most, you know, most people do. Um, and I'm sorry that you have this extremely aggressive version of that. But yeah, yeah I don't know. Sorry, I'm, th I'm also thinking about my own. Sim is looking at me. He's like rolling his <laughs> yeah, eyes. No, no. But Mira, please know that most people have had bullying in workplace environments. And, you know, and it, and it fucking sucks. And it sucks that it's coming from women. But I think that if you power through... I think it'll be very advantageous for you. If I was her boss, I would say she's a star employee. I'm going to continue to I would empower want to know her. If I was her boss. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't understand this management at all. Yeah, I've never heard yeah. anything like it. They're, well, she hasn't told them yet, though. Well, they, some well, of no, her, they, they, they know. It. They, they hear, they hear it. Yeah. They hear yeah. it, which is just so surprising to me. Because if they don't care enough, then, I mean, if you feel like you're, if that's going to stifle your, your, you know, your advancement in that job, then you have to start looking for another job, especially if the bosses aren't on your side. That sucks. Right. And I've, I've definitely been looking at it. It's just, I think it's just hitting me a little bit harder because I was bullied all through pretty much my entire childhood by in high school, like nonstop. And this, I felt like I was actually doing something good. And now it's just like a repeat of high school where I'm getting acknowledged, but it's, I'm still just like that loser. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, um, maybe risk having a confrontation. Just say something to them directly. Like, I fucking hate it when you talk to me like this. Don't ever talk to me like that again. <laughs> I don't know. You could try it. <laughs> I mean, they can't fire you. They're just, you know. Oh, uh, Mira. Right, they definitely can. <laughs> um, thank you so Mira, much. Thank God, you. I'm yeah. Let us know what happens. Yes. Give us an update. But I'm sorry you're going through this. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll try and just buckle down through it. We Good luck. You. Love you. Thanks. Love you. Bye. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by State Farm. And in honor of their surprisingly great auto insurance rates, I'm going to tell you about a particularly surprising day on set. It takes me a long time to read a script. For almost every line of dialogue, I will stop to figure out why my character would say it, how it fits in the conversation, and how it's going to come out of my mouth. Between the lines, there are larger chunks of text which describe everything else happening in the scene. Maybe what a room looks like, what characters are wearing, and what they're doing. As I often underestimate how long everything in my life takes, I know I can make up some time by reading those larger chunks a little faster. I got the script for Overboard about six months before we started production. I read it in my warm living room, wearing comfortably warm clothes, sipping from a warm mug of tea. Somehow, it never occurred to me that when you jump off a boat in the middle of the ocean, the water is surprisingly cold. And it doesn't get any warmer on take two. Here at Unqualified, we love State Farm because they provide coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by ZocDoc. Who gets excited about trying a new restaurant that has two out of five stars? When it comes to finding healthcare, don't ratings matter even more? ZocDoc is a free app where you can compare doctors, read reviews from real patients, and even make same-day appointments. When I finally called to reschedule my dentist appointment, I was told that my dentist had been retired for nearly three years. In my defense, parking was a nightmare. Through ZocDoc, I found a new dentist who had great reviews, took my insurance, and whose office was actually within walking distance. I was also able to book an appointment instantly without talking to a receptionist who made me feel guilty about not having my teeth cleaned for three years. My new dentist didn't make me feel guilty either and only suggested I floss a little more often. Whether you need a primary care physician, dentist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, eye doctor, or other specialist, ZocDoc makes healthcare easy. Now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash unqualified and download the ZocDoc app. Sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor who might be available as soon as today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash unqualified. Last call, and we're going to call Justina now. And Justina is in Texas, and she's 25. Hello. Hey, Justina, it's Sim. Hi. Hi. Anna, say hi to Justina. Hi, Justina. Hi, Anna. How are you? Good, how are you? And Anna's going to introduce our very special guest to you. Heather Graham. Hi. Hi. So, Justina, your fiancé, first of all, congratulations, you're pregnant and you're getting married. Um, Thank you. What are your conversations with your husband like? What's annoying you? Okay, so before I got pregnant... We always talked about, like, someday what would we name our kid. And he really wanted to name his kid Mickey because he loved Mickey Mantle baseball. Like, him and his dad bonded over it. And I agreed to it, like, a long time ago when I wasn't pregnant. And whenever I got pregnant, he just kept, you know, saying the name, like, oh, I can't wait to name our kid Mickey. And the more I heard that name, the more I just hated it. And I just don't want to name my child that. And so... We kind of got in a, like a fight about it, and he thinks that I just kind of told him that at the beginning just to kind of like shut him up, and then I would get my way anyway, but that's not true at all. Like, I really legitimately did like the name at first, and so now there's all this like hostility whenever we try to talk about baby names, because um, we just found out it is a boy like a week ago, so like Aww. definitely is a boy, yeah. And so you, are, are you in like the, the like the end of the first trimester? Um, yeah, I'm 20 weeks, almost 21. Oh my gosh. Are you feeling okay? Um, no, I'm good. I just feel him cook- kicking like all the time. Oh, oh my gosh. But you're not like having like any more nausea or like, I don't know, no, restless I'm, legs or. I'm super lucky because I've had a pretty good pregnancy. Like I've been nauseous. I can probably count on all my fingers, like how many times I've been nauseous and threw up. So. Oh, God. Not like, well, yeah. I'm so, oh, gosh, I'm so happy for you. Um, <laughs> Fuck, the baby name thing. Oh, boy. So tell us how you guys left it. So basically, every time we try to talk about it, he doesn't like anything I suggest. And a part of me thinks it's just him kind of still angry because he was, like, so set on that name. And he keeps telling me that whatever I suggest has to really win him over because he was so set on the name that he really wanted. And same, like, he will suggest names to me, but the main thing is I come from a super Polish family. Like, I'm Polish. We speak Polish. And ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted the name to just translate. I just want, like, a simple name that just translates into Polish. And he just, I mean, he just doesn't understand that that's super important to me. And it's just, I mean... I might just be super hormonal, too, because I'm pregnant, but, like, I just feel like this main thing is just, like, just causing so much friction between us right now. 
Yeah, that does seem like a that's a that's a big thing. Oh boy. Okay, so um, so you're having a boy. Does he like uh, any other names? Like, is he open to any other names? I suggested a couple, and then a few days later, he's just like, "No, I don't like that anymore." Because there's something that feels uh, slightly irrational about this. Maybe Sim would agree. Um, because yeah. um, there's something that feels like there's an undercurrent. Uh, I don't know. We, we, you know, a, about something else. Maybe he's scared to be a dad. Maybe you're both scared to be parents. Which you know, hmm. fucking yeah. I mean, I was. I am. Yeah. Um, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but, but. Uh, I, um, but yeah, so I, I wonder if, if this is, um, sort of a little bit of an indicator of something that's running a little deeper. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for, for me, I just know that if you're going to be carrying the baby for all that you're doing all of the, I mean, I feel like you, the guy should have no no say whatsoever. You're doing all the work. I think that you should be able to name your baby and he should just be able to accept it and that's it. Because honestly, yeah. I mean, what what did the guy do? He he just he had his job was easy. Well, he's been I mean, he's been wonderful. He goes to all my appointments and he'll always like cater to whatever I want to eat and Can he come up with another name that he likes? Like can you be like, "Okay, what give me another name that you like?" Yeah. Um, and then I don't really like them either because it kind of goes back to the whole, I just want something that translates to, you know, so he'll just come up with like, he's suggested a couple, which I like the names. Like, I think he suggested like Neil the other day, Tyson. Um, I can't really remember. That's good. But so he's willing to move off that one name. He's got. Other yeah. Names. But I just really want it to translate because that's just important to my family. My sister just had twin boys. And she named them Riley and Jackson, which I love that name, those names, but there's just been so many like comments within the family, like, like, you know, that's not a Polish name, blah, 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 blah. So I just don't want to deal with that. And and have you, is, is, um, your fiance, can he hear like those conversations? You know what I'm saying? Like, can oh, yeah. you, can you talk to him about like, Hey, this is, this is important to my family. Or, like, what's your dialogue like in terms of, of that element? I guess, yeah, I guess I haven't really told him that part of it. Like, he knows I've been wanting it to translate, but I don't know if he knows, like, how much that really does mean. Well, he needs to, you need to tell him that right away. You need to tell him how important that is to you and your family so he understands that. Why does he have so much more power over you than you do over him? Why, why does he what? Why does he have more power over you than you do to him? Because I, I, I ask this in a gentle way because I've been in this position many times in relationships. But for him to sort of instill this kind of weird fear about this particular name that he doesn't have a ton of – there's not a lot of – like logical backup. No, it's because he liked Mickey. Because he liked Mickey. He never. He's right. never seen Mickey Mantle play. He has right. never seen Mickey. Right. He, was, he wasn't born. So, I, I think it's just something to just think about. Don't do anything necessarily. Yeah. Because I'm so not qualified <laughs> to talk about any of this. But um, but 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 I do think it's a seed that should be planted by a stranger, a celebrity in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> but um but uh but 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 do do think about that because i i don't quite know why his his defense isn't it's it's just not strong i mean the main thing is he has a lot to do with his dad he's really close with his dad and just baseball in general and that player but his dad is just so excited that i'm pregnant and that you know that we're having a son like i don't think he would care what we would name it exactly your dad's not his dad's not going to care what if you so, name mickey the give mickey the middle name would you feel up for talking to his dad alone Ooh, really without talking to his her fiance just first? saying like hey you know we're having this you know we're so excited to be welcoming this beautiful new baby boy 
um, your son is is set on this name. I, I'm not sure I am. Yeah. Like, what would you like? I don't know. It's, it's wouldn't, definitely wouldn't that piss off the fiance. Why? Because she went straight to the dad. No, 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 no. Because then maybe if she has a good relationship. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like leaping over things, Justina. But but what if like her fiance's dad could say to her fiance, like, "Chill out, bro." Yo, (laughs) yeah. Name him fucking. What about like Justina? What like what if you weren't thinking about your family? You weren't thinking about your husband trying to please them. What would you want? Like, what name do you want your kid to have? Um. I've kind of been stuck on like Bartholomew. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love Boris. Yeah. Oh, I love anything with yeah. a B. Yeah. Um, or An- or Anthony because that was uh, my late uh, grandpa's name and he was super important to me. So make yourself happy. Forget all these other people. Uh, but I, but you know what? The <laughs> yes. tr- this truly is like. I think it may be an extension of actually the stress of the coming baby that's coming yeah. sort of fear. You know, it's, it is sort of, it's, it's the small thing that's coming uh, out of, you know, what you guys, the stress you guys are, are experiencing. So that's I, what I'm thinking too. Cause yesterday I even called my best friend and I was just crying cause I was super hormonal. Like I don't even know why I was upset. And I was like, in this name, like, we can't agree on the name. And she was like, it's not a big deal. Like, y'all will figure that out. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you and you will. And you will. But um, but I do think that, you know, in your defense, that your fiance could be a, a little, a little more, um, you know, he, mal- has to, he has to let her name the baby. She's carrying the baby. <laughs> She's going to give birth. He has to let her name her. That's it. He has no leg to stand on whatsoever. She's doing all the work, and she'll be doing all the work <laughs> after too. She can name the baby. Yeah, the baby does not yeah. need they need to be named Mickey Mantle. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, Bartholomew is a cute, cool yes, name. It is. Kind of name. It's unusual. Um, but no, I no, I I I think that uh, I think this is like a long dialogue, and it sucks that in this stressful time that you might have to be slightly more rational than your fiance. Um, because that's, that's not exactly fair to what's going on in your body. But having said that, true, right? But, but, but a name, you know, uh, it's, it's, an, it's an important decision. And I think, um, I don't know, I guess just talk to him. And, but, and I would think about talking to his dad because maybe then his dad talks to him and says like, yeah, I want, I want a little baby, baby B. Just hold little firm. Baby. <laughs> hold it's gonna firm. be okay. It's all gonna be okay. Yeah, but yeah. I'm sorry though. But um, yeah. Let but. us know what you ended up naming the baby, and congratulations, Justina. Congratulations, I will. Yeah. thank you. And yes, and yes, yes. I love you. I love you. I love you so much, Anna. You're like one of my role models. I just want to tell you that. Oh, thank you. I love you. Will you please keep us posted on what happens? I will. All right. All right. Love you. Thanks. Bye. Love you. Bye. Oh, God. I wouldn't know what to do. What do you mean? She, I just don't understand why this guy is, it's even a conversation at this point. She's carrying the baby. End of story. She can name the baby anything she wants. Or at least be a compromise, right? Like she shouldn't be forced to name. Yes. Well, okay. Compromise. Yeah. That's fine. But yeah. I mean, if he's, if he's staying firm on Mickey, that's ridiculous. That's so short sighted and narrow minded and just, just an awful dick guy thing to do. I'm sorry. It is. If that's what it does feel like there's something else going on. Ugh. You know, like he's scared. She's scared. I mean, they're both they're scared. Have a baby, their first baby. I'm sure that's scared. Yeah. Oh. Right. Well, we should wrap this Heather, up. Yeah, thanks. I love you so, it's so much. Aw. And you're awesome. Yes. Half Magic is out. I'm going to call you with my, my relationship problem. Please. Oh, come please back. Will you come yes. back? Yes. You're terrible. Yeah. Did you not recognize them? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, thank you again. I love yeah. you, dear listeners. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye.